Welcome back. A few weeks ago I was over having lunch at the Rock Creek Tavern and I was looking at some of my uncle's work and I just got inspired to make another lamp. So I did this one out of chestnut, the shade's chestnut, and the base is walnut and it's about 19 inches tall. If you want to see how I did it, stick around. The wood shop is sponsored by Chefware Kits and Easy Wood Tools. Okay, this is a piece of chestnut I got from Paul Crabtree. He brought it down last year when he was here, and I've had it soaking in water and dishwashing soap since he brought it down. So I took it out about two days ago, let it kind of dry out a little bit. It's still going to be really wet and turn nice. And I'm probably gonna start this later at about 1200 or so. It's pretty balanced. I already tried it, so it's running true. I had a couple of questions about that carbide cutters too, and the first one was how to get a nice clean finishing cut. So there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Make sure the cutting edge is on center and then your tool is level. They actually have a little stick on level if you're having a problem with it too that goes right on the on the tool that would help. And the other thing is make sure your final pass is nice and smooth and slow. And that and you're gonna get your best finishing cut with that, that way. All right, I decided to go with the bigger jaws so I had more of a tenon to grab a hold of. And keep in mind too, when you're turning wet wood like this, don't leave that gap too small because this is like a sponge. So you need to keep tightening this up as it goes because it just keeps smashing it. Okay, I'm setting up the steady rest. I use my little speed square here to make sure it's square to the bed. And then these little guys here, I just run them in till they touch. Just don't put any pressure on them. Okay, this is a two and a half inch Forstner bit. So it should take out quite a bit of material and then that way I don't have to work at this all day long. Okay, I went in there eight inches, which is right about here. You see that? Because I didn't want to, I don't want to come down past this little transition and make this weak. So when I'm hollowing it out, I don't want that really thin. So I stopped right there and I just used, just measured, you know, the whole thing and it comes up to one inch on the, on the quill here. So that's what I did. And I may you bring the Forstner bit back in after I get the majority of this material taken out here. But we'll, we'll see here. I may just take it out by hand. Okay, I'm hauling out the inside now, and there's just not a whole lot to see, and it's a long process. I used uh, that two and a half inch Forstner bit, and it's still, there's just a lot of material to take out, and it's a lot of on and off with the lathe, lathe cleaning out shavings. So I'm using uh, Paul Crabtree's The Big Hollowing King, and it's got that little spring on it which is nice once you get down to close to your wall thickness you put that spring on and when that thing pops up it gives you wall thickness and especially on something like this you want the wall thickness even all the way through it so you don't have any problems when it's drying Okay, I have it all hollowed out. I went ahead and just hit it a little bit with hunter grip, but it's gonna dry and the grain's all gonna stand back up, so I'm not gonna do any more on that. What I did is I took the Forstner bit again and down into here, so it's hollowed out into here. So I'm just gonna cut it off because I'm gonna have the top open so light shines through that. So, and then once this dries, I'll, I'll put it back on the lathe and sand it. Alright, this shouldn't take very long to dry. The wall thickness is pretty thin. Okay, the shade's dry. So what I did was pack it in the shavings and put it in a paper bag and just kept rotating around until it, until it was dry. And on something like this too, make sure that the wall thickness is the same all the way down. Use your calipers and that really helps with the drying process and prevents it from cracking too. If you have a thick spot here and it's really thin here, 
that's when you start getting into troubles and getting cracked because the moisture is going to stay in that longer than it stays here. So what I did is I made two little uh, jam chucks here just out of some scrap wood and I need to sand the outside of it. I just kind of hand sanded the inside of it and I'll finish that up uh, a little bit too. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish sanding the whole outside here and then we'll work on the base. Okay, sorry about this. I did this a few weeks ago and accidentally deleted the footage of turning the, the base. So it's pretty straightforward, just, just gave it a basic shape. I took the lamp auger here, pulled the, the pin out of my tailstock and ran that up. And these are, this that's what this is for. It's for a power cord on lamps. So I'm just kind of keep working that in. So I'm gonna CA glue in these little cracks and then true the whole thing back up and uh, start sanding it. Okay, I had to get a little creative on how I mounted the bracket on the inside of the lamp to the shade. I ended up turning just a ring and then cutting down a piece of flat aluminum and drilling that out and screwing it to the, to the bracket. It worked out well. I had to adjust it a couple of times to get it to come up towards the top, but it worked, worked good and it, it seats in there nice. Okay, there we go. I really like the colors in the chestnut, just some great spalting, some nice colors in it. The walnut had a few little cracks in the base, but I just filled them in with CA glue and just add some character, but I really like the shape and really enjoyed it. Okay, uh, and again, if uh, you wanna sign up for uh, the one-on-one -on -one classes, they're on the Patreon thing. And another thing I'm doing, I'm doing a giveaway every month. So this month for the Patreon members, I will list it on, on the, they call them perks on there, but I'm giving away the TIE Fighter, so I'll do a drawing for that on the, on the live hangout. So if you're interested, go check that out. If this is your first time here, I have a new project video every Friday. I hope to see you there, and if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe. All right, take care.